let's continue, ladies and gentlemen, um, from where we left off. Um, we were talking about childhood anxiety disorders. And then we spoke about the physical symptoms of um, heart rate, high ulcer, diarrhea, vomiting, and nausea, blood pressure rising and all that. When you observe that, you need to call the ambulance and get help for them. And these are some of the serious challenges that some of our kids go through. And I think individually, um, every child has got just a little bit of that anxiety, but it becomes a disorder when it's not temporary again, when it's permanent. So, some other symptoms are self-doubt and self-criticisms. It means they don't have any confidence. They doubt their ability or their capabilities to deliver certain tasks. They always criticize themselves that they ain't good, they are not good, they are not this, they are not that, they are not beautiful, they are not worthy, they don't know mathematics, they don't know science, they don't know, they are always putting themselves down. So these are some of the signs. Irritability, they, they are quick to, to, to be angry, very quick tempered. Sleep problems, in extreme cases, thoughts of not wanting to be alive. That is the most serious part of it. Suicidal thoughts, to that extent, so it means that childhood anxiety disorder, if it becomes a disorder, please get it checked out because the end result is death. The end result is dangerous because they'll be having this suicidal thoughts. First of all, their confidence is zero and they will have this self-doubt, this self-criticisms all the time. They'll have very quick tempered, they are irritable all the time, sleep problems, they can't sleep. And whenever you don't have proper sleep, it becomes a problem. Insomnia brings about depression. Depression brings about so many anxieties and it ends up with kind of different thoughts that is very deadly. So you see how this whole thing is getting to, it's getting messy every single day. So please, if your child has this disorder, please get her or him some support. Let the professional take this matter up seriously and let them assess him or her. Let them plan his or her care and evaluate it from time to time. Let that person have a care plan, a, 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 a treatment regime that is going to really support that child because we don't want to lose our next generation. Because of these things that sometimes even in Africa we don't even know about. It destroys our next generation. But we don't want that. So every little symptom, every little thing that we see, we bring it on board and discuss and know what exactly to do. So that we save our next generation from all these anxiety disorders. Let's carry on. If these children are left untreated, oh my God, as I was saying it, it's, 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 it's even here. It's, if these kids are left untreated, they face risks such as poor results at school, avoidance of important social activities, and substance abuse. That is when it gets worse and messy. Because they don't want to go in public. They really have poor results because they are not functioning properly. They can't think. They can't study. They can't retain information. They don't have photographic memory. They don't have retentive memory. That is going to help them reproduce what they've learned and pass their exams. And they're avoiding important social activities. And when they get into substance abuse, oh my God, that is the worst kind of situation that you want your child to be in. It's the worst kind. You don't want your child to be a drug addict, an abuse drug. That is the worst case scenario. 
because that brings about suicidal thoughts that brings about and robbery that brings about burglary that brings about rape that brings a whole lot of vices in the in the community social vices antisocial behavior that's when everything goes in hand in hand with this kind of situation so you don't want your child to be in this situation and not get out it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse every single day so please parents out there teachers out there check out these little things and make sure you get some support for these kids they need you they need you and they need you please don't ignore them don't avoid them don't neglect them please get them some support because they need it they are next generation and therefore if they are going through that and you've picked a few clues here and there and seen that no this person is suffering from a or b please get them some help children who suffer from anxiety disorders are likely to suffer other disorders such as depression eating disorder attention deficit disorder both hyperactive and inattentive and obsessive compulsive disorder as i was saying it's all mingled up because you know when we talked about the ocd the obsessive compulsive disorder and we talked about the other disorders the social anxiety disorder the generalized anxiety disorders the the, the, the separation anxiety disorders the the the, the it's, it's it's all you know situational anxiety disorders is all put together because one comes and calls it's, it's like a group the host is going to be there let's say zoom let's say zoom it's like a zoom call the host invites a whole lot of people that is how these disorders react a zoom call has a host and the host invites the group so if there are 20 groups out there, the host is going to invite individually all the groups to come on board so that they have the Zoom meeting. This is exactly what is happening here. So that's why it's saying that children who suffer from this anxiety has got extra disorders, eating disorder, attention deficit disorders, as we mentioned, the other side, hyperactive and inactive and inattentive an obsessive compulsive disorder so one is going to pick the other to come in and is going to be calling the rest to come in that's how it works so anorexics are problem children that has got all these childhood anxiety disorders and it wasn't really looked at properly and it developed it added more problems to it eating disorder they don't want to eat and they have particular kind of food that they eat and sometimes bulimia and all that they eat and they want to vomit you get you know they go into all types of faces that is really scary and not pleasant at all and when depression also sets in when they are hyperactive as well you know attention deficit hyperactive disorder so they become very hyper they become very violent they hit they pick they they, they head back they do all sort of things so have you seen the picture it's all getting messy very all getting nastier by the day so one disorder brings in another brings in another brings in another so it's like doing gravy or stew you have to add tomatoes you add your onions, you add your ginger, you add your garlic, you add your oil, you add your spices. So by the time you finish making this gravy, there's a whole lot of you add your meat and all that. That's how these disorders behave. When one comes to play and you don't check that out properly and seek for help, it goes and brings the rest of them. That's how it works. So research in this area is difficult to perform because as children grow, their fears change, making it difficult for researchers to obtain enough data and thus more reliable results. 
between the ages of six and eight. 